Hi, and welcome back to Dirtbag Baseball Talk, everybody. Kirk, along with Jason, as always, and great to have you back here with us. And, and you know, our ultimate goal is, is, you know, your success really is our mission. So we've taken a lot of questions and, and concerns and a lot of dialogue between Jason and I over the last uh, several weeks as well and kind of compiled it. And obviously, you know, the last few episodes, we've been talking about throwing and the kinetic chain and, you know, ground force and going through that. So we've collected questions like I said and and today's a really good time to just help out with that because both Jason and I respect the fact that you know as a player especially at the amateur level as a player or a parent or a coach you know you're overwhelmed you're stressed you're you're confused and you'll probably hear us say uh paralyzed through uh analyzed uh in this episode for sure so you know, that's what Jason and I want to touch on today. So we're going to cover things like, you know, warning, uh, warning signs, red flags, you know, um, with working with products or industry leaders or how to evaluate when you're at a clinic, even who really has value in their conversation and, and who is really probably using a bunch of buzzwords and trying to sound and using a lot of bravado, I guess, maybe is the right way to say it, Jason. So, um, but also we're going to hammer down on the fact that it really does come back to you as the individual as well and the family on having that motivation. If you're not self-motivated, Jason or myself or other great people out there like us, we can't motivate you. We, I'm sure you get that all the time too, Jason, right? You know, wow, you should be a motivational speaker. You got me pumped up. I'm raring to go. But we realize that if we're doing that every time, we're not really getting anywhere, are we? No, there's, there's a big difference between motivated and committed. That's what I tell people. If you're motivated, that's great. Go somewhere else. If you're committed, you can stay. We can work together. <laughs> Yeah, I 100% agree and stuff. So, you know, and, and just take this, everything that we say today for sure, dirtbags, is, is really something for value for you. So, Jason just hit the nail on the head. So, if you're committed to it, let's go ahead and carry on with this episode. If you're not committed to it, you don't have a growth mindset like we talk about, you're closed minded, you already know it already. Click the button, shut her down. You don't need to see us anymore and we don't need to see you either or whatever. But if you're not and you are motivated and growth minded, stay with us and let's get going with it. So um, I know some fun things that you like <laughs> really get under your skin, Jason, um, and mine as well. Make no mistake about it is you're at clinics and you've been at several clinics over the last few years as you've got the kinetic arm going and as well as uh, Elite Edge Fitness. And what are some warning signs and, and really red flags as well for you that you would pass on. I'd say a, a big thing that, um, you know, I've had some parents and athletes come into, come into my facility and they'll have, uh, you know, like these print offs or, or this data that they were given at these clinics. So <clears throat> from a business standpoint, they look at that as building value. So if you go to a clinic and they give you a bunch of reports and analytics and things like that, and they can't answer a question that you ask, there is zero value in this smoke and mirrors kind of dog and pony show that they just charged you for. Um, so I've had parents come in and they're like, oh, this is my, you know, this is where they said my hip shoulder separation is and there's this and this. And I'm like, well, look at where your front foot is planting. Did they not point that out? Or, you know, they point out all these problems and then they don't tell you how to fix them. So if you're not getting the answers that you need and they're just trying to feed you, you know, data and numbers from these fancy software programs, again, there's zero value in that. You can, you can get one of these apps on your phone and get that same information on your own for probably, I don't know, 10 bucks a month. So if you're paying, I think one of the clinics was $2,000, $2,000 for a weekend course. And um, then he comes in here, you know, with his dad and we correct the issue right away. He said, well, do you want to see what they said? And, you know, no, I don't, but for entertainment purposes, yeah. And, uh, you know, they kind of use the lingo they made up, which means nothing. They don't understand anatomical function, um, the terminology to actually explain, you know, what's going on with the musculoskeletal system, just uh, some fancy imaging. Um, it's really nothing more than slow motion you can do on your phone. So if they can't answer your questions, then there's, there's no value. 
Yeah, 100%. And going off of that one right there, what's your favorite question when you're attending a clinic and you're just a, you're a spectator, if you want to call it that, uh, man hiding, not hiding behind the sheet, so to speak. And not that you're trying to, you know, you're always trying to grow. So I say it haphazardly or whatever and that, but, you know, when you go to your clinics, you go with intent and purpose too. And, and so you're speaking as, you know, a dirtbag out there watching this right now. What's your most powerful question that you want to have answered? Um, I think it's that why that you always talk about. <laughs> yeah, that why I'd say, you know, asking them how, how they can fix the problem they identified, or what are you supposed to do with that information? Um, there has to be something actionable. I've been to plenty of plenty of clinics, plenty of presentations where people just regurgitate things from research papers. But if there's nothing actionable, all those fancy words and, you know, uh, you know, big reputations, completely useless because there's nothing actionable that you can take from that seminar conference, whatever it may be. There's nothing you can take and use from there. Definitely. No question. And, and you spoke about it off there before we started this one and that, uh, and, and I think you hit the nail on the head and this is a really good one to hopefully be able to uh, get you thinking about it. Dirtbags is, you know, you said we're in an industry right now, whether it's at the MLB level or the amateur level, it doesn't matter where everybody identifies the problem, but there's no solution to it or no answer to the corrective measures that need to be taken. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of fancy technology and everyone, you know, the word biomechanics just, it's kind of like how elite, you know, I remember way back, I was the first elite edge. Now there's elite everything. And uh, really, especially these travel teams too, all these elite and select. Um, but everybody's saying that they're, you know, they do biomechanics or, um, you know, they can identify these problems, but all they understand is how to work the technology. And what baseball has kind of gone to is who has the fanciest technology. And that's really it. And it's really sad because baseball is very far behind Um and all these people that know how to use the technology don't understand how the body functions or how to restore function or correct, you know, a uh, neuromuscular issue or a muscular imbalance, something like that. So it's really, it's, it's called a superficial assumption of gross motor function. So it's a really fancy way of saying, you see all this stuff flying through space and they're just trying to guess, you know, what's happening internally but really they're just looking at it externally. So I always go back to the analogy. I've never seen a mechanic watch a car drive down the street and tell you what's wrong inside the engine. Is it the EGR valve? Is it spark knocking? Is it the cam? Is there a lifter that's sticking? They have no idea. So they might say, oh, you need to lift your arm up. But neurologically, that might be the best solution that the brain could orchestrate based on what's available. So that's what they don't understand how to evaluate is before they put somebody on the mound or in a batter's box with all this fancy technology, do they even have the skill set to evaluate what's available that day? Because if they can evaluate that, they can fix the problem, but they don't have that skill set. So hitting, hitting go or play on an app and looking at all these coordinates and space and time, if it's even that fancy or all these straight lines and angles, it doesn't mean a damn thing, nothing. But again, if they did that and they could see, and I do with my iPhone all the time, that's, that's really all you need is, uh, you know, slow motion. So I have these athletes come in that paid all this money, at this clinic, they were told what was wrong with them. They don't know how to fix it. We can slow-mo it, see what's wrong. Then I can put them on the table, do some positional testing. And I do it with a digital dynamometer. So there's actual objective data. So um, it's not like you go to these clinics and they say, oh, if you do this motion, it activates this. And I always tell them, I say, well, prove it. Oh, well, we know. I'm like, do we? Do you know? Because I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure you just made that up because that movement, there's a lot of muscles that can compensate to get you in that range. So you don't know what you're talking about. So the people that are saying, if you do this, it activates this, ask them to prove it or ask them, how do you know? What data do you have? Because looking at all these, you know, fancy lines and slow motion on some app, it's pretty worthless. Yeah, no question. No question about it. And, and fantastic. It's cool. It's very cool. Yes. Yeah. And I think but, that's it. it. And great comment right there. It's cool or or buzzy and the buzzwords that we always hear now and stuff like that. And I think that's something that's really, you know, some of the industry, the players and parents and coaches out there are tired by it or paralyzed by it. 
Um, and some of them just don't even bother anymore because they don't want to hear it anymore. So, you know, a couple of questions uh, for you that I, I've received back is, you know, you talk about that mobility without stability equals vulnerability. And that can relate to a multitude of areas that you're working on the body and stuff like that. But in the simplest forms, what kind of an example could you give for the audience? Because I was talking with people last week about it and that, and they're like, hey, that's really interesting. Let me dig into that. I said, believe me, I'm digging into it too. <laughs> so some of the drills that I see um, primarily with these uh, hitting, I guess we'll call them gurus because they have a lot of followers. Um, and to me, those people are getting ripped off and there's probably a lot of injuries, but when they're, you know, standing on one leg and, uh, you know, swinging the bat and their hips aren't rotating. When your hips aren't rotating, you're maxing out rotation in your trunk, which means you're jamming your facet joints. So you're literally bone on bone. Not only that, but the torque on that knee that is on the ground, now you're just beating up either your medial or lateral meniscus and also maybe your LCL or your MCL. So, um, you know, a lot of these things that they're doing are, are not anatomically correct. So let's say um, I had a pitcher that came in, he blew, this is an actual uh, client of mine. So he blew his arm out a week after leaving a popular weighted ball place. Um, not the first one I've had. Then he's paying for this online program. Um, I just saw they were trying to take credit for, uh, you know, a well-known technology guy's son gaining all the velocity. He blew his arm out two years in a row. We'll get back to that. But they wanted to take the credit for it and put that story out, but they don't want to give the follow-up to what actually happened. So all this velocity at all costs, yeah, that's great. Um, so back to this athlete. Blows his arm out a week after the weighted ball training place. Has Tommy John. He's at, um, you know, they won uh, the national championship at that level. And he doesn't have any internal or external rotation at his back hip. So if that instability is causing muscles to tighten up, to compensate and try to keep that hip stable again if if things are contracting how they should and they're not shut down then your body will give you that motion as much as you know the structure will allow so on his other side he had quite a lot more internal rotation and then i could passively rotate his leg so we know that it's not a structural issue it's the muscles pulling tight and then the strength coach is compounding that compensation pattern making it worse by having him max out on drop back lunges. What in the hell is the point of maxing out on a drop back lunge? There's no point. It's a really stupid thing to do because when you have an instability like this at their hip with internal or external rotation, you're making that pull tighter. So if you keep working out, let's say a certain muscle group, it tightens up, right? Yep. It's basic homeostasis that you learned in junior high science class. So your body automatically kicks in and puts that tension there because it's responding saying, okay, I know there's gonna be force applied, I need to be ready for it. So you have that hip tightening up and tightening up. Now, why did that fancy online uh, or that fancy weighted ball throwing place that's known for their motion capture system, why did they not identify that limitation at his hip? Why did this thousands of dollars online program not identify that limitation at his hip? These people don't have the skill set, And again, they're giving all this, um, all this data based on the fancy technology they have, and they don't understand the basics of how this human being, this athlete, this individual functions or has dysfunction. And nobody, nobody identified that. So how is he supposed to rehab from his Tommy John surgery that was probably caused by these programs? So was that there before? Is it there after? It was certainly limiting his progress. But why did nobody have the skill set to find that, but they have $100,000 cameras? So your $100,000 camera isn't telling you, Jack, if you can't even figure out how much range they should have at a joint with active and passive range. So that's why I say active range of control. And I see, I saw another person uh, talking online about, you know, you need to assess their passive range of motion. No, you idiot. If they can't sustain a contraction in that range, it's useless. It's completely useless. It's like in CrossFit years ago, they had uh, probably get a letter in the mail. CrossFit's quick to sue people, but it's a headline on the, you can Google it. So they had 50 something pec tears in uh, the CrossFit games because they were doing dips going all the way down, yeah. you know, into full range. So again, it's a very basic bell curve at end range, you're the weakest. So it's just a basic understanding of anatomical function 
and um, you know, inertia. So it's, yeah, there's not a lot of common sense out there. It's kind of being overtaken by uh, fancy technology. And I think it takes a, well, I know because I've invested, you know, a lot of years and a lot of tens of thousands of dollars to learn it. Um, it takes a lot to learn about how things function. It doesn't take very long to learn the basics of an app and try to build value that you can charge people money to spit out the data. Yeah. Yeah. And you're seeing it everywhere, right? And, and multiple platforms regurgitating a lot of the same information, right? It's, it's, I guess it's the quickest one to the, to the trough, water trough, maybe mentality, I guess. And, and, and I realize it on the engineering side, from what I know, talking with those people in the industry and that it is super expensive for the engineering building these apps. So it is a race. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think the intention, like you said, they've identified the problem, but now they're not, they're almost, so heavily invested in it that money wise i'm talking about investment not time and, and knowledge wise that they've mm -hmm. forgotten about the answer like you said or the understanding of what it is we're actually trying to educate and empower you on by using our app it's the first yeah. one the fanciest one and and like you say the loudest one in the room that's another one that gets me all the time right the loudest one in the room and, and unfortunately you know a lot of people fall into that trap of following that person, right? Or the loudest one on social media, the one that's willing to fight and argue. And like I said to the man, when you're at a ball game, for me at a ball game, what I learned a long time ago as a young player standing beside the head scout of the uh, Montreal Expos when they were still the Montreal Expos at that time. And he's talking to a longtime LA Dodger uh, scout and every and, and the whole lineup, college coaches. I'm sitting there looking at it as a high school guy and I'm just watching this guy. And he was the quietest guy in the room. He didn't say anything. And I got in the van afterwards with him and I said, well, he happened to be in Florida. So around Charles Johnson, which was a Olympian catcher at the time and uh, down Miami Dade area. And, uh, you know, he was throwing guys out from his haunches in high school, hitting 400 foot bombs, da, 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 da. And, and that's what I said. I said, why didn't, why didn't you get too excited about it? And he says, why would I get excited about it and run my mouth and speak out loud when I'm the one that wants to draft that guy at the end of the day? I don't need Jason and everybody else in the world knowing. And I never forgot it. And obviously not. I'm telling you right now. But, you know, and I know you've seen those stories. Um, I, I think you would agree with me on that one. Maybe maybe you have a bit of a different too. And, that, and that's okay because that's what we're here to do is learn. But I tell people, look at those quiet people. A lot of times those quiet people have great experience, great knowledge. And you don't know who, where they played and at what level they played. Yeah. And that's going back to social media. I look at, um, I look at some of these people that have, uh, you know, they're, they're posting all the time and going live and um, I barely have time to sit down and eat my lunch. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. I'm solving much larger problems, getting people to walk again after a traumatic brain injury or a stroke or multiple failed cervical fusions. And I'm looking at these guys argue on how to train a well-bodied athlete on how to run, throw or hit. It's, yeah. it's, it, I just kind of shake my head and, you know, Twitter, Twitter is kind of like a litter box. Um, yeah. There was a guy, uh, Chris O'Leary, who was, he called himself the pain guy. So we, we made a post about our product and he reposted it. And he's the guy that says he can look at you and tell you how you should move based on, you know, if you're shaped like somebody else, which is a really incredibly stupid thing to say, because you have no idea what kind of compensation patterns were built over time, injury history, um, so he reposts the video of my product and he says, I don't understand how this works. I don't see any benefit. And it's like, wait a second, you just stated your ignorance in that first statement. You don't understand how it works. So probably what he should do is ask questions. But that's that's Twitter is everybody thinks they're an expert because they have a Twitter account and followers. But he stated his ignorance in that first statement. And there's another one that's on Twitter a lot. You know, he's, he's got a hitting product. And he's on there saying, I, I might not know what I'm doing. You know, I might not be teaching what's right. And it's like, then why are you taking people's money? Because that's called fraud. And that's what a lot of the industry is. It's fraud and there's no integrity. Giving people a, a, a slow motion, you know, a bunch of lines with analytics, you're not doing them any favors. So find the person that can answer all your questions. And if there's a question they can't answer, they should say, I don't know right now, but I'm going to learn and get back to you instead of just making something up because 
you'll know right away if you back them into a corner and they, they can't get out. Amen. Preaching to the choir, brother. I love that for sure. So um, definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, one other question before we move along. I know speaking to a young uh, young player that I was working with last week and his dad and that and saying, you know, how excited I was and, and learning stuff every day from you. And, and the active and the passive stretching again and stuff like that. And I said to him, make sure you're watching the YouTube because I said, I don't even... It's amazing. So I know I'm not alone, dirtbags. I know there's millions of you and a ton of you have already sent it in to me in that and asking about it. Like, go through that active and passive stretching again, because it's amazing to me because we're trained mm -hmm. from whether we're an individual sport and in this case, a baseball team sport to stretch. Stretching's good. Stretching's good. And I tried to say to him, I said, no, this guy was starting to educate me in the fact that we can even do over stretching. How can we do over stretching? I said, I don't know. I'm learning. <laughs> so go through that again for me, man. Yeah, I'll I'll um I'll email you some really good studies as well that we can you can post the data. But um, so if you think about it, if you you know if you have a cramp, what's the first thing you do? Yeah, you stretch it out, right? Yeah, <laughs> because that shuts that muscle down. Yeah. So so why why does that happen? So with cramping, there's I wouldn't. I wouldn't say there's a, a conclusive reason. I think it's a combination of, um, you know, electrical hydration, um, fatigue. So there's a lot of, a lot of things, but if you're taking that muscle to end range and forcing it, your brain knows that if you try to produce force there, that's going to be dangerous because again, we have at mid range, we're the strongest end range, we're the weakest. So the brain knows you have, um, what's called a muscle spindle, which kind of, you know, senses how much force to produce or respond with, um, so when we do muscle testing, we kind of put slack on the muscle spindle. So we'll put it in a shortened position to see if it can contract. So then we know neurologically if it can, you know, work in that position. That's how we draw out the weakness. But if you're constantly pushing a muscle to end range, if you think about, I mean, we could talk about like plasticity. If you're constantly stretching it out, almost like stretch marks on your skin, right? Yep. If skin was actually elastic, we wouldn't have these stretch marks, right? Yeah, so, no, absolutely. so it's potentially, you know, causing trauma, repetitive micro trauma, um, not to mention if we're, you know, taking it to end range, uh, I read a study saying something about, you know, um, the brain emitting like relaxing um, and it'll, you know, put, put slack on, I'm trying to remember what it was, but uh, basically, so go out to the field, I want you to stretch out as much as you can with your lower half, and then I want you to run a, a 40 or a 60 you're not going to do well. It's just like after you get done stretching the life out of your arm, yeah. you have to start out throwing light, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of good um, data and studies showing the use of isometrics to actually kind of neurologically prep what you're about to use. So you could put tension into these muscles and again, muscle stabilized joints. So muscle tension is a good thing. We just have to make sure it's balanced, but go stretch the life out of your arm and then try to throw as hard as you can. And then you'll feel exactly what we're talking about or stretch your legs as much as you can for five or 10 minutes. And then I want you to time your 40 or your 60 and see how well it goes. So we don't, we don't need any, any data for that. That's a hundred percent. That's how it feels. And that's how you know that things shut down. Yeah. So, so that's why, like you were saying at end range, sometimes let's say you're, you're stretching your legs, your hamstrings out. And, and that's why you'll start to get the shakes a little bit. Because your, mm -hmm. your brain is identifying that you're in a weak state, actually, right now. You, yes, you're straight, but now you've gone past it. And so you're actually weak and it's starting to shake and, and exactly right. So, okay, that's starting to make sense to me. That's starting to make sense. So let's, let's talk quickly, if you don't mind then. What would you recommend for coaches out there, parents out there, or players themselves out there, that I, I use it now as warming up to open up my body. And I don't know if that's the right terminology or not, but it kind of visual for me. I think a kid can get a visual out of that is, is you're kind of opening up your body. And so really, what are you trying to do? Trying to get the blood flowing through the core of the body that will go extend out into the extremities. So starting out with um, like movement specific or motion specific, um, I guess you could call them exercises, but like a jog, a back pedal, you know, side shuffle, high knees, butt kicks, um, doing a little bit of band work, maybe a press, a row, curl extension, things like that. 
So that way you're actually getting the muscles firing before you go to use them. Yeah. So that way you're actually putting some tension into the muscular system and turning things on. So you know that they're going to be, well, hopefully, unless you know, you're know you overtraining, which is what happens in baseball, overuse injuries. Um, but at least if you do that, you know that you're ready to use those muscles versus you don't know what's available and what's going to work. And then you're just stretching everything down because, you know, that's kind of automatic when you get to the field. Um, but yeah, definitely. I'd say give uh, anybody that doubts that stretching shuts muscles down. Um, definitely stretch out your quads, your hamstrings, and then run a sprint. See how well it goes. Yeah. Put yeah. a helmet on. Yeah. So it's interesting to hear you say about that tension, actually like stretching, but opening up and, and yet creating tension to actually have you ready to perform. And it it makes sense now that you say it, because even though it's a slow moving sport visually to watch, it is, it's, it's a very explosive sport. And, and for what a second, two seconds, you know, an outfielder or an infielder on a play, maybe, maybe two to, maybe two to five seconds in total type of stuff. So it's kind of, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a, it's kind of a feel good thing that you do. So it's almost, kind of like picking a scab you know it it might feel like it's what you should do but really that scab is there to protect you and heal things up same thing with muscles if you have something that's tight that extra muscle tension is because something else is weak and you have to have muscle tension to stabilize that joint or that area of your body so when you're undoing that muscle tension that goes back to mobility without stability is vulnerability so yeah it's a it's kind of a good comparison is you know it's like picking a scab and you always ask people why are you stretching they're like oh i Uh, I need, you know, need more range. And you look at the stretches that they're doing. You don't go anywhere close to that range with that joint, like the seated, you know, 90, 90, we were looking at last time. Um, You know, the crazy stuff with the arm going back here, you're just causing impingement up here at the glenohumeral joint. And I mean, when do you, when do you go back into that range? And then I always love this one because, you know, my, I had shoulder pain for a little while and I realized, you know, I was trying to wash my back that every time I crank my arm across my chest to reach my back, that's what made my shoulder hurt. So as soon as I stopped doing that, my shoulder pain went away. So you can also get bursitis from that too. If you're really stretching and cranking the arm, you know, up and over. Yeah, definitely. No, that's all fantastic news and, and information, Jason, no question about it. Um, one final one for me, and, and this is a big one. That's just as vital as every other component of this uh, episode. Uh, and that is, again, going back to the understanding that, with everything that is out there in the industry at, at, at every levels from apps on data collection to products on data collection to training aids and throwing aids and everything else out there, hitting whatever it is, tease for God's sakes. Um, there's just so much information that again, we understand you get overwhelmed and stressed out and confused about the whole thing, but this is super important. And for everybody that has already reached out to Jason or myself and started inquiring about, you know, warm up, stretching, opening up, um, the kinetic chain, the kinetic arm, kudos, kudos. You're on the path to moving forward, whether you ever do anything with that or not, you have what Jason and I are so excited about is you now have, you own the knowledge. You have the knowledge and knowledge is power. And the reason it's power is because now, whether it's from myself or Jason, you now have information that you can take away and say, I like, or I dislike because Or, hey, you know what? I'm still a little bit confused or a little bit overwhelmed. I'm going to dive more because now I know these guys are cool dudes and they'll talk with me about it. So that's exciting. For everybody that isn't out there and is still afraid to do that, you've got to stop. Don't be passive. Do not not be reactive. Be proactive. Don't wait. You got questions about Jason and the kinetic arm, that sleeve? you contact him now again i know we do it every episode jason but any trouble with them reaching out to you big guy no anytime i've had some great uh great questions i'm actually going to make a video for uh hiroshi over there in japan about um she had a great question people were asking about elbow stress with breaking balls so i'm going to do a great a great uh video that will add to the youtube uh by the end of the week showing um 
you know, explaining why the breaking balls can be more stress because a fastball you're pulling down harder and you have those forearm flexors that cross the medial elbow. So when you don't have all that tension from throwing something hard, then you have more of kind of that separation force or that dynamic valgus. So um, yeah, any questions you have, no matter how technical or how basic, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of bad information out there. So, um, you know, feel free to use any terminology, you know, and just fire it over and we'll, we'll dissect it. Yeah. Yeah. The, Cause the worst thing, right. Is the person that just sits there. How many, how many people have come into your elite edge fitness over the years and that, whether it's for training itself or to get their body looked at for functionality and, and correct if, if required. Or again, maybe they were doing a lot of stuff right that they didn't even know they were doing right. But I'm sure you've had it the same as me with, you know, I don't know why we didn't start with you years ago or whatever, or six months ago or whatever. I'm sure you've had those same situations, right? Where people- I've, were... had, a, I've had an orthopedic, a sports orthopedic surgeon that was with several professional teams. He came in, I put him through a workout. He said, wow, I just realized I know nothing about exercise. And that's, again, doctors don't learn about exercise. And I sure hope they weren't, you know, spending time on that when they were supposed to be learning about medicine or surgery. Um, but yeah, the people that you think should know about it, you know, doctors, physical therapists, um, you know, everybody needs to ask questions. So always, you know, question everything because that's how you're going to learn. There you have it, dirtbags. Uh, there's not much else to say. Sit on your hands or raise them at the back of the room or push the social media button. If you want to contact us, email. It doesn't matter. You know, jason.colloran, C-O-L-L-E-R-A-N at gmail.com or the kinetic arm. Go right to them there on the website. You can get it. You know, myself, Kirk at dirtbagbaseballnation.com. The only person holding you back is you. And I'll tell you, this life goes faster than you think it does. So <laughs> every day, don't waste a day. Don't waste a day. Get up, get after it, get dirty every single day. And if, you know, don't be afraid of what the person beside you thinks of you. It's not their journey. If they think negatively of you or whatever, not great. You don't want them in your network anyways. You might as well find out sooner than later. And build a network of people that you can trust and you know unequivocally are in the journey with you. Those are just some of the things that Jason and I want to pass on to you because we know they were important to you. We know we had to get those answers out to you and stuff like that. We can't thank you enough for sending them in to us. That's what it's all about. Again, at the top of the episode, like we said, your success is our mission. That's what drives us. I, you know, <laughs> I'll put my hand up. I, I know Jason will do or whatever. If I could be five and doing it all over again or whatever, I wouldn't heartbeat. I wouldn't heartbeat. But I can't turn back the clock. So all I can do is try to pay it forward. This great game. And that's what Jason's trying to do as well. Through the kinetic arm, through his own education, through elite edge fitness, and just being an all around good dude. It's as simple as that. That's what it comes down to couple of dudes that love baseball, love talking about it, love sharing it. And you know what? Hopefully you embrace it and hopefully you move with it. So any final thoughts, Jason, before we wrap this episode up? No, can't think of anything, but, um, you know, back to the, the technology. If you get overwhelmed, step back, get rid of it. You know, simplify what you're doing. Um, you know, we hear people arguing about launch angle, but what percent of base hits do people actually end up on base? Um, you know, if you're if you're having some uh, motion capture done with pitching, um, you know, ask them questions about, you know, why things are functioning how they are or how they could function better. Um, you know, if they if they're a one trick pony and all they know how to do is hit go on the app or work their camera, uh, get rid of them. And as always, if you can't have your questions answered, or you're not getting the progress that you're paying for. And that service is not meeting your expectations, go somewhere else. Hey, share it for Jason and myself. Pass it on to your other colleagues, your other teammates, your other parents that are out there overwhelmed and confused and stressed out about this, this journey. And, you know, let them know about their big baseball talk. Uh, Jason Colloran with the Kinetic Arm, Elite Edge Fitness. We can't thank you enough if you do and you will. And, and it just helps us build the nation and, and grow this journey that we all are so excited about. So, Jason, as always, 
awesome, brother. Love it. And, and I walk away smarter than I started with. So if nothing else, I'm happy if nobody else is happy. So I guess that's a greedy note, but uh, that's pretty much what we just talked about, right? It's all right to be greedy sometimes because ultimately you do have to get some answers at the end of the day. Yeah, definitely. All right, brother. Thank you, Dirtbag. So on behalf of Jason and myself, we'll see you here at the next episode. In the meantime, send us, continue to send us those questions. Continue. Get out there. If you haven't researched the kinetic arm, www.thekineticarm.com. You can also go to our site or whatever and stuff like that for any apparel or uh, the rope trainer, any of our other training products that we associate with and promote and believe in wholeheartedly really is what it comes down to. And, and that's what it's all about. So till next episode, dirtbags, you know what time it is. It's time to get up, get after it and get dirty. <laughs>